absolutely every caravaner should have this in their van. Stick around, let's roll that intro. In my seat. Are hey, you sitting in my seat, mate? Mine. Oh, yeah, it's my seat. Mine. It's my seat. Mine. 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 I don't think my ass is going to fit in that seat. He's <laughs> getting <in> badly. <laughs> hey, you guys. Steve here from Australian 4 x 4 Adventures, and I hope that little teaser kept you kept you around to you know. What's what's going on? So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and welcome to the YouTube family. Hopefully, anyway. You might hate me and you're not gonna subscribe, which is perfectly fine. The feeling's not neutral. I, I, I don't hate you. Just not a fan if you don't subscribe, that's all. <laughs> right, so I have a 2022 Jayco Expander popped up out back caravan. I wanted to run you through the entire 12 volt setup of the van because it's fairly, it's not super elaborate, it's not like a super high end crap. This is, I'd almost put this on as a, as a budget build for an off grid caravan setup, which I think we need because there's a lot of pe people out there now that are just got in this great big pissing contest about how big, how expensive, how much money can they spend on their camping setup and they're just trying to outdo the next person, which I think is a little bit of a pissing contest, to be honest with you. And there's a couple of big YouTubers and a couple of other companies out there that all they're, all they're trying to do is bigger and better. I get it, I get companies doing it, I don't necessarily understand YouTubers doing it, because, beside the point, I digress. <laughs> All right, so let's go inside and let's have a look at what the 12 volt setup is for this, for my off-grid setup. Toby, mate, what do you got? What have you got? Mm. Have you got jelly beans? Yeah. I hope mum doesn't watch this video because I'm going to get in trouble because you got jelly beans. Mummy. <laughs> Mummy's here later. <laughs> All right, so to look at the van inside, you actually probably wouldn't pick the fact that it's fairly well set up for electrical wires. So, I've added a little pop-up, pop uh, two, two power points and USB sockets down here. That's just so I've got some actual power on this side of the kitchen, because in the Jayco's, there's no power on the kitchen side, which is a bit stupid. But there is a power point down by the bench, so that's what that's plugged into. Um, that's actually made for power points. There's not a lot in this van, to be honest with you, from factory. Um, obviously there's the outside power point, so that's easy to use. It's gas, gas, gas cooking inside. I've changed it over to a, uh, a 12 volt and 240 fridge only, so it doesn't run on gas. I think they're inefficient and I don't like them. And it's full of the goodies. So I have gone with iTech World for most of the setup, mainly because they did sponsor, sponsor me. So they've given me everything for 50% off of the uh, retail price. My only obligation was I had to make a video about it didn't have to say it didn't have to be good or bad the review on the actual product is going to come down the track because I haven't had it long enough to know whether it's as good as other brands out there early reports seems pretty good so far but I haven't really given it a good smashing just yet so I've got the iTech world battery monitor here so this basically gives me um, amps going in and out and change it so it's got um, the total amperage so that says 307 amps left of 400 yes there's 400 amps in here and then I've got a percentage as well, so it's 76.8% for the batteries overall. So I've been here for a day and a bit so far. But, yeah. Alright, so looking around, excuse the mess because it's muddy and windy in here. 
but you wouldn't necessarily know that there's really anything different from a standard one. Obviously added a diesel heater down there, the controller and the outlet. And then down there is a little remote control for the inverter. So what that will do, since I can turn that on, that's the inverter powering the entire van. So you would have heard all the beeps, because that's because the microwave would have turned on and anything else that that's 240 would have basically just turned on just then. So, I'm gonna show you the brains of it now. Right here, so down in here, obviously we've got the changeover switch that I got put in by a licensed electrician. You're not meant to do this by yourself. I don't recommend it doing it because if something goes wrong because you're playing with 240 volt power and your van burns down, you're not gonna have any insurance. Plus, it's dangerous. Someone could die with 240 volt power if it isn't grounded properly, earth properly. If you stuff something up, it's dangerous. So get a licensed electrician to do it. Not only is it a legal requirement, it's a smart thing to do as well. But, quickly explaining how it all works. So essentially, you've got shore power. So that's your main power coming into your, into your van that you plug into your house at home. That would basically be what, what's classified as shore power. You're changing it over from shore power to inverter power. So essentially you're running the entire van from the inverter versus shore. So both feeds run in to the inverter, uh, the changeover switch. And then mine's a manual changeover switch because I didn't, I'm not actually gonna change it from off the inverter because it's very rarely plugged into 240 volt power, even at home, solar's enough to sort of keep it all going. So I, want, I, I opted for a, a manual changeover switch over an automatic changeover switch. He nearly spilled your jelly beans. Inside there is basically just a, uh, a circuit breaker and safety switch for both circuits. And then the, the manual changeover switch. So up for me is on the, on the, jet, on the inverter. In the middle is everything's off, so no shore power, no inverter power. And then all the way down is the uh, shore power only. So obviously, flick it back to inverter power. You hear it kick back on. The inverter's running the entire van as if it was plugged into the wall at home, which is pretty cool, I reckon. So that's that's the, the, the changeover switch there. All up for a licensed electrician to come in, run all the wires, supply all the gear, cost me about 650 bucks. So it's not over the top. It's not yeah, another two thousand dollar thing to do. It's relatively um, cost effective. I think it works really well. All right. So while we're here as well, while I'm filming the uh, the, the van rundown, also got a whole bunch of other YouTubers around at the same time. So you have four seconds. What's the channel? Last time adventures. Get in there. Trip ski. Uh, All right, we're done. Cool. Done. <laughs> no mucking around here. We've got four seconds, people. This is going to happen. So, so he's following me. He's trying to get another four seconds in. <laughs> Tips, trips and gear review. All right, four seconds. Edge forward driving camping. Don't forget, hit like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, we're done. Now. Do it, we're done. All right, last one. Four. Gay and the lesbian. Sign up, like us, whatever. All right, we're done. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Happy day. So I, <laughs> the other half down there. So it's pretty much just a little bit of a YouTube gathering at the same time. So I just use it as an excuse to come camping. Obviously done the whole rundown of the van on the electrical setup, which is pretty cool. Hopefully you like it. Doing a bit of a cook up at the same time, so done a little bit of B-roll, that stuff, so you can see what's going on there. It's been a good weekend so far. Toby hasn't fallen down the cliff yet. I say yet. <laughs> but he's cool. He's, he's having an absolute ball, which is what all this is all about. As long as he's having fun, I'm having fun. Okay, so the rest of my setup is tucked away down the back here. So this is obviously specific to a Jayco expander and the current models. There's a, a slim little storage line down the back of the van here. The factory battery was where I've mounted the uh, the diesel heater and everything else, and that's where the actual controller, of the, the J35 controller for the rest of the van sits as well, which is why the battery's there. I've extended the wires all the way around to the back here because I couldn't fit as many batteries as I wanted in that space down there. So if I... Get rid of that for a second. Under here is where all the magic happens. So under here I've got two 200 amp hour iTech World lithium batteries. So 400 amps of lithium in here, done, done nicely out of the way. Um, I've got the DC, DC to DC 1240 plus Enerdrive charger. I've got the Blue, Blue Star Victron solar controller. That's the 100, the 100 volt 50 amp output one because I've got 
three three panels uh, linked in series up the top. Yes, a series so it pumps the voltage up. Um, then I've got a, a little fuse panel, two bus bars, so one for positive, one for negative, so it keeps the wiring nice and neat, neat and tidy. All fused as well, so I've got mega fuses pretty much everywhere, and a couple of re resettable fuses um, for the for the DC DC charger and the sol solar control charger. Um, past there is the iTech World 3000 watt um, inverter. Main reason I went to th um, this one is it's one of the only ones that were 3000 watt. There's there's not a heap on the market that seemed like fairly good quality for a 3000 watt, but none of the, none of the 3000 watt inverters that I could see came with an automatic changeover switch built into them. That that is a thing. So I think the the um, Enerdrive 2600 comes with an automatic changeover switch built into it. So you wouldn't have to do, go down the route of getting an electrician in to, to wire up a changeover switch. But they are significantly more expensive. This one was $900. I think the Enerdrive one's more like um, $1,800. So it still works out about the same sort of price overall. Tugs, mate. <laughs> um, but I get more wattage out of it. So the difference between 2600 and 3000 it doesn't seem like a lot, but it means I can run the aircon in the van and the and the air fryer and induction and stuff all at the same time. So there's, there's plenty of capacity there to do it. Quality wise, obviously I haven't had long enough to know fully, but that's that's the goal overall. So iTech World did give me a promo code. So if you guys want to use it, so it's A4X4A, um, or A4X4A, and it gives you a 10% discount off everything in their store. So. And that's on top of some of their sales as well, which is pretty good overall. So don't forget to use the promo code. <gasps> More! You got jelly beans? Show me. So just to prove to you guys I'm not full of crap, I'm gonna turn the aircon on. That'll take a couple of minutes to sort of ramp up. And this is all, I'm, I'm not near power. So let me quickly go outside and it's gonna get really bright for a second. Have a look at this. Nothing's plugged into the van. So this is full bush camping. Um, it's windy as hell out here. It's been raining overnight. It's just stopped for a while now. So I'm not plugged into a generator. I'm not plugged into shore power. This is purely bush camping. So to say this can't be done is ignorant, for one. Um, whether this is cost effective to be done, that's another question. <laughs> so that's starting to ramp up now. So we're still only using five amps but temperature right down so it actually uh, starts to work so we're still using seven amps eight amps so that'll start to ramp up over time once that's going I'm gonna turn the, the air fryer on at the same time to prove that the inverter can handle the whole lot with ease because it's got a little graph down there on the bottom as well lets you gives you gives you a percentage on how much capacity you're using of the van of the inverter sorry so so we get all right starting to ramp up now so 30 amps. All right, now, so it's been about five minutes or so. I had, actually had to turn on the heating because it was too cold here. So it's on heating now. It's using 110 amps to do that. So I'll get essentially four hours of heating out of this because it's going to cycle slightly once it actually gets the temperature. So, it's not too bad overall. To prove it can do more than that though, this is the inverter. Air fryer. Let's crank that on, shall we? So, we're sitting at 228 amps now. And to probably trip the entire thing out, I'm going to turn the uh, microwave on. This could be bad. So, it's saying... There you go. So it just stripped out. Oh no, it's on max. We're still going. It was 350, uh, 350 amps. But it just cut out. So there you go. At least the inverter has a cut out. That's a bonus. So it's good to know that the safety features actually work on the inverters. Dead set, that is the first time I've ever tried to do that. I've done air con air fryer before, never done air fryer, air con microwave. Mommy. Probably pushing it a bit too much, but more. someone wants more jelly beans. Mommy. You're not getting more jelly beans, mate. 
No more beans. No. Done for beans. Uh. Alright, so I'll let that reset. I think I've got to turn it on and off to do that. So I know a few of you are going to be going, well, why do you need all this stuff? Why do you need um, 400 inch lithium? Why do you need induction? Why do you need your microwave to run while you're out camping without a generator? And well, Why? Because like, everyone always asks that. Not everyone. There's always a select few that always ask, why do you need to go to this extent? Here's my reason why. Because I want to come out here more and make it easier. And the easier it is, the more I'm going to want to do it. That's it. There's no other reason. There's no... I want to be better than someone else, I want more, I want this, I want that. It's for him. So we can enjoy this more often. So stuff like, cause he's, still, he's still on a bottle. So if I can make a bottle for him without having to go to the effort of setting up a generator or, or cooking it on a stove, as in heating up in a pot, putting it in the bottle, taking 10, 15 minutes to do it each time, it's easier. So it's literally the same as what you do at home. Chuck it in the bottle, chuck it in the microwave for 30 seconds and it's done. And if there's no generator, I'm not annoying any other campers, it's easy. I can do it at 3am in the morning if he wakes up for some reason. He doesn't though, because he's a good sleeper. Aren't you, mate? <laughs> yeah? That's, that's why I've done it all. So for all the people that I know they're going to put it in the comments, but why do you need a changeover switch and this and that? Because life needs to be easy, so you can enjoy it more. So there we go, so that was obviously aircon, air fryer and microwave. Microwave tripped it out because the microwave uses about 100, 100 uh, amps by itself. I did see the uh, the monitor just before it cut out and I was saying around 360 amps out of it, which is well over spec for what the, uh, the inverter needs to do. 3000 watts, it's only around about 260 amps-ish. Does have a spike value, I think, for about 20 seconds or 10 seconds, up to 6,000 watts, so it's, which is around about 450 amps ish. Um, well, probably a bit more than that. I'll do math. Math will be down here. I'm not today. Toby's destroying the van on me. Um, so that is pretty impressive for what is a relatively cheap inverter overall. Super impressed with that. You can see with the rest of the wiring in the van, I've done all of it myself, so I've, I've tried to make sure that the cable size, cable size is all correct, um, specking that the right way, and fusing. Fusing is the number one thing that you've got to do when you start doing all this stuff. It has to be done properly, or if you don't know how to do it, get someone who does to know how to do it for you, because that's the difference between your van burning down and not, including your four-wheel drive. So this isn't just specific to vans. It can be done on four-wheel drive stuff as well. Toby's trying to get into the batteries. <laughs> So that's my super quick run through of what we're doing here. Hope you enjoyed it. Obviously we're having a pretty cool weekend at the same time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below and I'll see you next week.